until your father gets home, Sean Brown. Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, and very welcome guests. Growing up in Baltimore City, I was surrounded by a loving and caring family. Also the fact that both of my parents were in the same household to raise me, which is a blessing. Raising children can be a challenge, especially when you have a young scientist on your hands. Some would consider me to be mischievous when I was younger growing up. I had a fascination for science for some reason at a very young age. My first experiment were the effect of goldfish out of water. I figured, well, there's oxygen in the water. Why can't they live outside of the fish tank? Being a young lad at this time, my mother was preparing dinner. And she always did it about 5.30 in the afternoon while my father was coming home from work. My brother was in his room doing homework. And Mr. Sean, young scientist, was roaming around the house. In our living room, we had a fish bowl just within arm's reach. Three fish, three gold fish, swimming in the water, minding their business. Hmm, I wonder what would happen if I pulled out the bowl and see if they could live outside of the bowl. I reached up, I grabbed the tank with the tippy top of my fingers, and I pulled it down and cracked! The fish were out of the water. I'm looking at the fish jumping up and down. My mother escaped out of the kitchen at top speed. Sean, what are you doing? This is irresponsible. I love those fish. Go to your room. Not knowing what I did wrong, I went to my room, sulking, because of a scientific experiment. But one of my grandest experiments would never got to take off the ground was the fact that I wanted to see how electricity could be conducted through a paper clip. <laughs> <laughs> my mother once again preparing dinner, my, my brother doing homework. Mr. Sean, young scientist, found a paper clip lying around the house. I unfolded the paper clip with a straight arrow. Mothers have certain types of hearing. They, they can hear a lot of things, but those things that they don't hear, that their child is doing something wrong. As I proceeded to go to my first target, the socket in the dining room, I attempted to put a paper clip in the socket. My mother knew something was wrong. I was too quiet. What's Sean doing? She peeked around the corner, and seeing her young son about to shock himself to death. Sean, what are you doing? Then she said, six words I'll never forget. Wait until your father gets home. I'm in big trouble. When she said that, I am in big trouble. Go to your room and close the door. Knots form in my stomach. My brow full of sweat. What am I going to, I'm getting my story together right now to tell my father what I was thinking when his youngest son was about to kill himself. I'm performing an experiment, Dad. That's all. My father, at the time, was a truck driver for UPS. And he retired with 31 years of service as a manager. But there's nothing worse at that time in my life than having a man come home after delivering packages all day for 11 hours, smelling like a UPS truck and gasoline. <laughs> My father had a routine when he came home. We'd come in, as I heard 
his green Renault Le Car pull up. And the car is something like a Yugo. He will open the door, come and kiss my mother, and get himself a little drink. Take the edge off, that's all. He had a hard day. Curly, my father's name is Curly. Guess what your son did today? I'm eavesdropping on the door so I can hear what she's telling him. So I can get my story done. And she tells him what happened. Then I'm pacing the floor. Even worse now. My brother's laughing at me because he knows I'm about to get a spanking I'll never forget. No help from him. I hear my father walk down the hall to my room. Open the door. It doesn't have to knock. It's his house. <laughs> Sean, that man had my complete attention. Your mother told me what you did today. Yes? It's very irresponsible. You could have killed yourself. Don't ever do anything so irresponsible ever again in your life. I love you. He walked out the room. Where's my father? Because this isn't the man that raised me. Whenever you're dealing with challenging people in your life, whenever you have someone that gets underneath of your skin and just irritates you, maybe you have a young scientist on your hands, treat them with love, kindness, gentleness. That lesson I learned back then many years ago, <coughs> stuck with me until this day. He could have killed me in an instant right there. He did not. He chose to love me. My father, the man who he is today, I can say with all my heart that I love him. My mother, who didn't kill me either, I love her too. Young scientists need love too. Mr. Contest Master.